Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be looking at chemical digestion, but particularly for the IGCSE specification, the Cambridge IGCSE specification. Now, when you uh, study the topic of what's called human nutrition, you look at what's called the alimentary canal. Now, the alimentary canal refers to essentially the whole passage along which food passes through the body from the mouth to the anus during digestion. And when you consider uh, all the processes that take place within this alimentary canal, one of them is chemical digestion. And the actual definition uh, for chemical digestion is given on the screen. So we've got here in this top part the key definition of the breakdown of large insoluble. And I'm just going to highlight those two key words here, large and insoluble. So what we're referring to when we think of chemical digestion is the breakdown of molecules that are too big to fit through or pass through the villi within the small intestine, to be absorbed through the lining of the small intestine. And insoluble implies that they cannot dissolve into the bloodstream. So we need to break down these large insoluble molecules into molecules that are small and soluble. So small so that they can pass through the villi and soluble so that it can ultimately dissolve into the bloodstream. And it says here that that is predominantly done by the action of enzymes. So chemical digestion really is about the categories of enzymes that uh, break down these large and soluble molecules. So what I'm going to do is go through the key categories and highlight uh, where we're referring to essentially on this diagram of the alimentary canal to the left of the screen. So the first uh, key category of enzymes we're going to look at are those that break down starch. So these are the carbohydrates that we're going to refer to. So the first key category that we're going to look at are the carb carbohydrates. And as the name suggests, they're the ones that act on the carbohydrates. So we've got two that we're, we're going to refer to. The first one is known as amylase. And the second one is one called maltase. Now notice that both of these words end in the letters ASE. And in previous uh, videos that I've done, I've said if it ends in ASE, usually it's the name of an enzyme. Ase indicates that it's the name of an enzyme. So you've got amylase and maltase. Now amylase, there are really two uh, types of amylase we're referring to here, salivary amylase and pancreatic amylase. So salivary amylase is secreted or released, if you like, by the salivary glands. So we're thinking of this region here. And pancreatic amylase is released by the pancreas, this almost leaf-shaped organ here. And salivary amylase will work in the mouth clearly and pancreatic amylase actually works in the upper part of the small intestine. And the job of that amylase in both instances is to break starch, which is a large carbohydrate, into maltose sugar, which is a smaller sugar. So the job of the amylase is to break down starch into maltose. I'm just going to Put some key bits down there. Now maltase is actually found, or secreted rather, by the membranes of the epithelial lining of the small intestine. So the actual lining of the small intestine, the, the, the cells that make up that lining, within that membrane are um, maltase enzymes. So we're referring to essentially, if you can use the sort of dotted line part there that I'm referring to, or can even refer to this part here, within the lining of the small intestine, we have maltase enzyme being uh, released. And the job of maltase is to break down maltose sugar. So we're going to take the maltose and we're going to convert that into, or help break that down into rather, glucose, which is a simpler sugar. So if you think back to our definition, breakdown of large insoluble molecules to small soluble molecules, clearly starch is our, if I just label it here, starch would be our large insoluble and our glucose is our small soluble molecule. So there's our first category, the carbohydrates. 
So let's think of our second key category, and that's those that break down the proteins. And these are the proteases. So the name gives a bit of a clue there. So we've got proteases. And once again, there's two that we're going to consider. One is called pepsin. And the other is called trypsin. Now, most people have heard of pepsin in the stomach, but um, few have heard of trypsin. But both are examples of proteases. Now, pepsin is secreted or released in the stomach, but it also acts in the stomach. So we're referring to this region here in the stomach. And that's where pepsin is not only secreted, but acts. Now, trypsin, however, that is secreted in the pancreas. So we'll put another little, I'll put an asterisk here. So it's secreted by the pancreas, but this one works in the small intestine. So we're looking at this region here. Now both pepsin and trypsin do the same job. They both break down protein and they broke protein down into the smaller monomers or smaller repeating units that make it up and they are known as amino acids. So the job of pepsin and trypsin is to break down protein into amino acids. Now because ultimately if we think of pepsin initially as being released and acting in the stomach we know that the stomach uh, is an acidic environment at pH of about 1 to 2. So the enzyme pepsin must operate effectively at that pH otherwise it would be denatured it would be destroyed if it didn't. So here's a sort of extra fact that um, particularly the IGC is uh, is required. So the stomach releases what's called gastric juice. And in fact, I'm just going to make a little note of that up at the top as a reminder here. So what we're just referring to now is something called gastric juice and it's made in this organ here, the stomach. Now gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid now that helps to denature enzymes in harmful microorganisms, actually killing them. But it's not just that as one of its key roles. It also provides an acid pH, which is actually the optimum for the enzyme pepsin activity. So again, the stomach releases gastric juice, which contains hydrochloric acid, and this helps by denaturing enzymes in harmful microorganisms in food by killing them. And it provides an acid or optimum pH for the enzyme activity. So there's a little side note there about gastric juice. So we come to really our third category of enzyme that we need to consider. And our third category refer to the lipases. Now, as it happens, the actual name of the specific enzyme that we're going to refer to is actually called lipase. Just very simple, just lipase enzyme. It's secreted both in the pancreas and the small intestine. So again, we're talking, do another little asterisk here. And an asterisk here. So you can see these enzymes, are, are, they're all almost secreted and released in, in similar regions. We're looking at the pancreas, the stomach, the small intestine. The reason why I'm just highlighting that is because in the topic of human nutrition, you look at mechanical digestion and clearly you're focusing um, at how that food is broken down in the mouth by the action of teeth and chewing, for example. So let's just consider lipase for the moment. So lipase enzyme breaks down fat, also known as lipid, into smaller soluble molecules. So we're going to break down fat into and the smaller molecules that fat is broken into are fatty acids but also a molecule known as glycerol. Now you're not asked how many of each uh, for the IGC specification but if anyone is interested it's actually three fatty acids and one molecule of glycerol. So there we've got three big categories of enzymes, the carbohydrates, the proteases and the lipases that all act on these large insoluble molecules, the amylase, sorry, the starch, the 
protein and the fat. And just highlight those, I'll use these colours here again. So starch, the protein and the fat, those large insoluble molecules. And what we're trying to do is break them down into small soluble molecules. So as I've got the glucose, amino acids, and the fatty acids and glycerol. Now there's one other area that um, exam questions tend to pick up on and that relates to this particular region here. Now what I'm highlighting in here is the liver. So I'm just very quickly shading in the location of the liver and you'll notice in front of the liver we've got this part here and that that I've just coloured in yellow that is the gallbladder. It's very uh, just a quick sketch in there but the liver and the gallbladder are extremely important because that is where questions about bile come in. Now bile just make a note of this here. So bile, it's actually produced in the liver. So we've got a chemical here called bile that's produced in the liver. But it's stored in the gallbladder. Now the job of this chemical bile is to neutralise the acidic mixture of food and gastric juices that enter the duodenum from the stomach. The duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. So we're looking where I've just put a little black asterisk here. So if we've got all this gastric juice that's acidic working its way down from the stomach into the small to the small intestine, clearly that acid could be damaging. So this bile, this chemical produced in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, can be released into the duodenum to deliberately neutralize that acidic mixture. And what it also does is provide a suitable pH for enzyme action. So there's two jobs of bile, but its its key function is to do with the breakdown of fat, or more specifically, the emulsification of fat. Now, when we say emulsification of fat, what we're referring to is the coating and breakdown of fat to basically increase its surface area for digestion by lipase enzyme. So fat, as a large insoluble molecule, needs to be broken down. But bile is produced, which will emulsify the fat, so coat it and break it into essentially smaller globules. And by doing that, it increases its surface area so that lipase enzyme is able to act on it just that little bit quicker. So once these enzymes have acted, we've then got small soluble molecules that can freely pass through into the villi. Now, the glucose and the amino acids will pass through the... Uh, villi, the lining of the small intestine into the bloodstream, but actually an interesting fact is that the fatty acid and glycerol pass through the villi into what's known as the lacteal and then pass into the lymphatic system first. They do eventually drain into the blood system, but they pass into a lacteal in the villi uh, initially, and that I refer to in another particular video. So there we have just a little bit about chemical digestion for the IGCSE syllabus. Okay, hope that helps.